Hey guys, welcome back to Renegade Reviews. This is Renegade. Trying a new thing where I get up really early in the morning and do reviews. I'm not a fan of it at the moment. But uh, we'll get right into this. See, I just tried to do a video where I reviewed all three of these concept series figures, but uh, it got pretty long-winded. I still got it under 10 minutes, so it could still work, but uh, the Power Assault armor didn't really get much time talked about him. So now I'm just going to try to do them separately. So uh, let's start with the Power Assault armor, since he's fresh in my mind. Um, so guys, basically, Power Assault armor looks kind of cool. But uh, there's some flaws with the figure, and I don't see him as the most necessary one to pick up in your package. First off, he comes with this launcher. You know, it's color-coded to match him, it's alright. And it launches this gray generic missile, and it can clip onto his arm. Don't really care about it. Um, he's got the armor cards, which are pretty cool, actually. You know, the way they do the schematic and everything. And uh, those can be displayed on his stand you know with right behind him or you can put them on the front like this which I'm kind of a fan of doing and then you stick him there and it's like uh, the schematics are being pulled up on him you know so you know and then you can mix and match these you know everybody knows about the armor cards so those are cool and then the stand is a generic gray with one peg and the place to hold the cards and then no name like the review spot is pointed out even though they could have done one I don't mind too much because it allows me to just get a mix and max. But getting right into the figure. Um, Power Assault Armor. He looks cool. He's decent. Um, the thing about him for me is just he doesn't seem as good of a figure as some of the others. And I can't really put my finger on why because he doesn't lack too much articulation, although his legs aren't good. But we'll do the articulation now. Um, the head can't turn farther than this, which, let's be practical, it doesn't need to. But it can't turn all the way around because it gets stopped by those things. It doesn't really look up and down very much, you know, just enough. The head, though, like looking at it, it does have a classic, you know, it has the movie look for the head. Um, the shoulders have these shoulder pads on it, but you can rotate them all the way around. But then when you come out like this, they pop right off. Um, you know, it's a hassle and it's not that big of a deal. For customizing, these would be great that these come right off, you know, if somebody needed this figure. Um, and they allow it to be freed up pretty easy. The thing is, like, they could have just built them on like they did with other figures, and I don't think it would have been a problem. Uh, bends at the elbow to there, rotates all the way around. Now, the forearm's kind of cool because it's got, like, the gun... Uh, with the silver painted on, but they really just went red with everything else. But it's uh, it looks pretty cool. You can tell that it's like a gun on the bottom of his arm. Uh, wrist rotates all the way around. And then that's on both sides. You can see that. And then he's got two blasting hands, so he's, he's pretty equipped. Um, and this is the armor that was made for high heat, high impact places. Rotates all the way around at the torso, comes down, comes up, comes out with the leg, and will rotate around, but it's such a hassle that to save times I'm not going to show you guys. But, uh, well, actually, I'll just, here. Yeah, the legs are the worst part of this figure. They're so hard to move. Yeah, mine's not going to go right now. Um, double jointed knee, leg comes back, leg comes forward and rotates around to there and there because the shins stop it. So really this guy's missing a bit of articulation. He's got shoulder pads that come off and uh, but all around he's not a bad looking figure. You know he's different enough that he can fit in an armory okay while at the same time it's you know while at the same time you can tell he's an Iron Man figure. Which, like, when the armors start getting too obscure that uh, you can't tell it's Iron Man, then I'm going to start having a problem with them. Just to show you quick, this is the Inferno Mission armor. As you can see, it's the same figure with a uh, silver paint to it. And I think maybe a lighter red. But as far as I know, there's no difference to the figures. I don't intend on picking this one up. And uh, let me know if there is more difference, and I will link to a video of somebody else's review or something like that. But, um... 
yeah, guys, this it's a decent figure. It looks good. If you want to build an armory, yeah, he'll look good in there, and he can stand just fine. You know, once you get the legs set, there's no problems. Um, but if you're looking for, like, a posable Iron Man or somebody that well represents Iron Man in your armory, he's not the most necessary one to have. And, like, really for when you're going to use him for heat, you know, heat uh, environments. Like, I thought about having... I thought about... Originally, when I was doing Boog Nice's entry, I was going to have a bunch of Avengers and stuff come in to help get Nightcrawler from Hell. Mm -hmm. And I was going to use this armor just because it was a high heat place and stuff, but then I cut it back to just the X-Men, because that seemed more likely. But, uh, I'll give you the 360 of them while I'm rambling. But, yeah, I decided not to use him, and really, I don't know when I'll be busting him out for his primary use again. But he does look good in an armory, so I'm kicking the tripod. Sorry about that, guys. So I recommend getting the Power Assault armor if you want, if you think he looks cool and you want him for your armory, but you don't intend to actually use him for being Tony in an armor very often. Uh, that's all I've got to say, guys. Renegade Reviews, signing off.